Hey guys, how's it going? It's right again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to so please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm going to continue doing AR Foundation videos. I've been asked from a lot of you that you have enjoyed those videos, so I'm going to bring you more videos with that topic. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go to the asset store and download a 3D model that I think it's gonna look really cool and we're gonna be basically placing it around our area and also play with lighting and some effects to see how we can simulate a realistic AR experience. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this video, which is to actually place a realistic statue in AR with AR Foundation. So what I did, I went to the asset store and I started looking for free assets that we could use that would actually make it look cool when we place them in AR. Since I want to use shadows and I also want to basically scale these items, I want it to look very realistic and very detailed. So I found this golden dragon, which is free and I really, I really like and I want to see, really want to see how it looks when we, when we interact with it in AR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my assets. I'm going to go into opening Unity and I'm just gonna say always open this type of links in the associated app, I think that's fine. And it's gonna go into the asset store in Unity and we're gonna basically just download it and get it imported, okay? So it's gonna click on download. It shouldn't be that big. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base this example based on a previous demo that I gave you for dragging and dropping a single item. So, because I don't want to keep adding and adding more of these status, I just want to do one and interact with that one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on import now. We're going to import everything. And to be honest, I haven't done this, so I don't know how this is going to turn out. So, this is going to be, you know, as much of an experiment for me as well as for you that you're seeing this. So, and the other thing that I'll do is I'll put this in GitHub just like I've done with every single one of my videos in source code. All right, so this is now writing package items to the file system. We should almost be done with this. All right, guys, so it looks like it's finished importing. So we can now go and check it out. So I'm gonna go into image library assets. Let's see, dragon statue, there we go. That's where it is. And what I wanna see, I haven't looked at that asset, so I'm gonna go into 2D, click it and, and basically toggle back to 3D. And I wanna see how this looks and see how big it's, it's the actual statue because we want to make sure that we're careful with the sizing. And I think this looks, this actually looks really cool. So this one is the LOD zero. Let's just do some comparisons here. Then I'm going to do look at one and we can probably just do zero, zero, zero on all of them so that we can see them close by. All right. And there's that one. I'm going to also move this one right here and there we go and i think okay cool and let's also look at the uh, number two and i'm just going to put it at zero 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 and then we can move it and place it right there and then also number three okay you can tell that this is a developer since he's he's starting an index zero okay so and i like yeah i think they look they look great. Let me see if they have any documentation whatsoever. I don't see any documentation, but that's okay. We can, I just wanted to see if one can tell us which one is the highest quality just by going into it. I think zero, I think zero looks great. Yeah, I think zero is the one that has the highest quality. So that's the one that we're gonna use for the game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these other ones. And this is gonna be the one that we use for the game, therefore, I want to make sure that it has the proper size. So I'm gonna go into prefabs and also add one of the components that we added before because I wanna make sure that they are about the same size as the statue because I don't wanna start with a massive, there we go, with a massive statue. And, and to be honest, I think that size works. I don't think it's, I don't think it's too big. We could probably just do 0 0.7, let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and 0 0.7. Let me make sure that I fix Y and i think i think that works i don't think that's i actually like it much larger because it is a status so most status are pretty pretty large in size so i think i think i'm gonna do one 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 i think that's fine 
So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm not going to play around with these, this scene. I'm going to create a new scene. And the one that I'm going to create a scene from is going to be the dragging and dropping example that I show you because it's going to allow us to just do one object and they basically manipulate that object. So in this, in this video, what I'm, my goal is to be able to place the dragon in the scene, then walk around the dragon, see how it looks, maybe turn shadows off and sh turn shadows back on. And then in the next video, we can work on basically scaling it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say sta statue. And we can start with selection and dragging. We can start with that on this one. And excellent. So then the next thing that I'm going to do is I still have, you know, the air session like I showed you before, air session origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the place object large. That is my prefab for this example. So let's go into prefabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the one that I just added for the dragon. This one is going to be number zero. And that's as easy as it can be. Basically, we just replace the prefab with the one that we just downloaded from the asset store. And I think that's everything that I need to do as far as that. Then the other thing that I want to do is I want to play with lighting. So what I'm going to do is let's go into our panel here. And we also need to modify that panel because we're going to be changing the instructions. So let me go ahead and go into title. I think we can leave that one as it is. And then move your device around to map the area. Select, I think, I think this is fine. I don't think that needs to change, to be honest, now that I'm looking at it. One thing that I want to do is I haven't changed this to use the iOS version. Oh, it looks like I have. And let me uncheck the previous scene at this scene. And one more thing that I need to do before we keep going is instead of using free aspect, let me change this to use the portrait mode for iPhone X. There we go. And then we can just, so that way we, we have everything size for the iPhone XX, which is the one that I have right now. And there we go. So now the UI is also sized appropriately. So the other thing that I want to do is I want to be able to control a few things on this example. So I'm going to clone the panel and we're going to move a panel down. This panel is going to be the panel that I'm using for basically to track the di try different effects. I want to try to turn the light, the shadows on, shadows off. Also maybe manipulate some of the lighting and see how it reacts to the object. So we can call this one options. There we go. And then we don't need, we don't, honestly don't need a title. We, instead of instructions, we can just say header and this is going to be just called options. And I'm just going to resize this quickly here. We can just say options. And then I'm also going to resize this. So let me just move it. I don't want it to take the entire screen because we're going to need a space for all the options. So for this one, what I want to do is I'm going to say, you know, toggle, maybe toggle, like instead of toggle lights, we can do toggle shadows to start with. And we can just say disable shadows and it's going to basically be a toggle and we can put that there so maybe for this video we'll just do two different options and to be honest i'm not prepared whatsoever this is just you know i'm having fun and i want to show you how things work out when you're having fun <laughs> okay so i'll just move this up here and then we could probably also do let's do sh let's do lighting as well let's see how that works with lighting and this one is going to be the toggle shadows button. This one is going to be the toggle lighting light button. Okay. And we can keep this one on the top since it's the header. And we can probably just move this a little bit here. We just size it so it doesn't take a lot of the screen. And so we're going to start with these two, but I, I promise you that we're going to have a lot more options than this. Okay, so I think that works good. Let me just move this a little bit up and we can probably make it smaller. We don't need W there. And I am very selective when it comes to UI. So this is very simple, but at the same time, I wanted to make sure that it looks it looks good. Okay, so now that we have that set up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new script. So this script is gonna basically manipulate the lighting and the shadows. So since I might use this in another script, so I'm going to just create a new component. This one is going to be 
we can call it the effects manager. And it doesn't really matter what we call it. I just want to make sure that I call it something that I can remember. And then what I'll do is I'll go into my scripts and let's go ahead and create a new one. This one is going to be the, we can call it the effect manager or effects manager. Let me just make it plural. All right. And then I'll go here and I'll associate the effects manager with the game object. There we go. And then I'm going to need to bound the, to bind the, up the basically the options. So I'm going to go and double click it to open it up. And I'm going to need a couple of properties. I'm going to need this one for the button, which is going to be the toggle light button. And then I'm also going to need one for the lights where, well, the one that I just created was for lights. The other one that I'm going to need, it's going to be for shadows. So toggle shadows button. Okay. And this is also complaining because we haven't brought in that namespace. There we go. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create two methods here. One is going to be called void and this one is going to be toggle lights. It's going to be fairly simple. And then we'll do another one for shadows. Shadows. Okay. And then these two are going to be private because I'm going to be toggling them through here. And then what I'll do is I'll just say toggle light button on click a listener and then we'll add a listener for each one of them. So one is going to be for the lights and the other one is going to be for the shadows. All right. And this one will just say shadows. I think I made a plural. Yep, I did. And this one is complaining because of course the meta is not the right one. And then what I'll do here, I'll just some sanity check just to make sure everything. So if this is equal null or if the, the shadows the toggle shadow button is also equal null. Then we'll just say enable equal false and we'll just throw an error so that the designer knows that this needs to be set. You must set both button in the inspector. Okay, something so that we know. And then we'll just basically just return because I don't want him to try to bind to that method where this is this actually doesn't exist so it'll throw an error if we don't do if we don't have that return okay so so now what we need to do is i need to get a, a component which is going to be the lights so what i'm going to do is i don't have that in there i have the directional light here so what i can do is let's go ahead and add a new so these two need to be serializable by the way Otherwise, we won't be able to set them through the inspector. And I'm also going to add one more for the light. And this is going to be my default light. OK. And then I'll also do another check here. If light equal null, we can just say something similar. And we can say you must set the light in the inspector. There we go. We could probably just move that to a method and if we wanted to. Oh, let's just leave it as it is. Yeah, let's just not, not complicate it right now. I think that works. And okay, so we have our light. So then what I'm gonna do on the light is I'm gonna just say light enable equal true. And instead of doing that, this is not gonna toggle, so I'll just do a toggle. So to do a toggle, you can just do that with a knot at the beginning and let me make sure that I select the proper. There we go. So this is basically going to say if this is true, it'll set it to false. If this is false, it's going to set it to true. Awesome. So we also need to do something like that for, for shadows. So shadows are relying upon light. So we want to make sure that we have the light turned on before we can disable shadows. So I'm going to just make sure that, that that is true. So if lights are disabled, if lights are enabled, I'm going to say, and then we can just say shadows. And I believe we can just, let me go back into the shadows here in the directional light. And what I'm going to do is we can either basically just say no shadows on the shadow type or we can change the string. Let me see if I can just do it on the shadow type. And I have shadows angle, bias, custom resolution. Let me see which one. And light shadows. Okay, I'll just do the I'll just do the string so that we can just change that. 
and I'll just set it to zero before doing a toggle. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just say if, and so how we can do a toggle is we can say if shadow string is greater than zero. So if this one is greater than zero, we can set it to one. Otherwise, we set it to zero. And of course, it's complaining because I need a question mark there. So let me make sure that this is going to be OK. So the way that this is going to work is let me just add the shadow value. So this is going to be a flow shadow value. And let me just think about this just to make sure this is going to work. So what's going to happen is let's say that we want to turn shadows on and off. So we're going to go through here. They're going to be turned on by default. So we're going to check if the shadow string is greater than zero, which is going to be, then we're going to set it. So this is what this is actually opposite. It needs to be zero, and then this needs to be one. So by default, this is going to be one. So we're going to say if shadow string is greater than zero, then we're going to set it to zero. Otherwise, we're going to set it to one. So the first time around, this is going to basically set the shadows to zero. So we're going to disable them. Then when we go through again, this is actually going to be false. So it's going to set them to ones, which is going to be enabled. So this is how we can do a toggle easily by doing, basically by doing a check here with the ternary operator. So I think that's everything that we need as far as that is concerned. Now, let me just remove these things that we're not using just to clean up our script. And I think that looks good. So then the next thing that I need to do is associate those components through the inspector. So we have an effects manager here, and nothing is associated, so I'm just going to drag and drop the light. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the, the toggle. So I'm going to go here, and we're going to click on the effect manager. This is going to be for shadows, and this one is going to be the one for light. So I think everything looks good. Let me make this, button, this text a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'll just resize this, just make it a little, a little bigger. Just gonna do that because it's really hard to see, to be honest. And okay, and we can probably just move, move these two down a little further. There we go. And okay, so I think I'm, I think I'm happy with with that right now. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I think we have everything that we need to get it going. We associated the new dragon prefab to the place prefab in our placement with dragging and dropping controller. We also created an options panel and also an effects manager that basically binds those buttons with the, with the game. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build it. So let's go ahead and go to file, build settings, and I already show you how to do this. We need to add the, the new open scene, which is called status selection and dragging. And then I think everything else is good. So what I'm going to do is click on build. And then we'll just give it a name. So I'm just going to say statue example. And we can put it right on my desktop. I think that's fine. And then hit save. And that's going to build the iOS application. And then I'll just show you as soon as this is done how it looks on my device. All right, guys. So let me show you how it looks on my phone. So I'm looking at it right now. And this is the experience. The planes are getting tracked, and you can see how amazing the, the statue looks like. You can see the shadows. I'm also basically turning on and off plane detection and basically getting close to, to the statue. So let's just watch and see, you know, as I, as I make some changes and I get in and I get close. You can see how detailed this looks like. And yep, so let's just watch it and I'll just turn the light off as well. It looks like I snap it on the wrong location, moving it around, and there we go. I'm just basically walking back. And it looks really amazing. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. They have great forums and also great people that are willing to help you with anything that you need. Also, find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.